Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is get forward vector? Let's run through a quick little example. Lots of stuff is going to be on the screen, but I'll try to explain it as we go through it. Basically, you can see a little line coming out of the front of my character, and it's pointing basically the forward direction of the character. And that's what it is. We're using the forward vector to basically determine which way is forward, and then shooting out a line trace. Now you can also see this item here. This is a little box that I'll be rotating shortly. It has a forward vector of where the cone is at. So let's go ahead and look at it. Now the forward vector actually has a few different nodes in order to get it. But let's understand what the forward vector is first. Well, let's run this example and look at the numbers we have showing up. Now in our print we have basically 0, negative 1, and 0. The vector, forward vector, these return values, are going to be a normalized value, basically a length of 1, for the forward x axis in world space of this actor. Let me show you my actor. This is him here. As you can see, this red arrow indicates his x-axis, which is forward on him. He's got a little sphere here indicating his nose, a little plate in the back. But basically, when this actor rotates, the x-axis for the actor is always going to be forward. So when I use the forward vector, assuming I've set up my character correctly, as you can see here, and I ask it for the forward vector, it's going to always point to the front of my character. Now the value returned is going to be small. It's going to be normalized between 0 and 1. When we look at this, you'll see 0, negative 1, and 0. Let's turn my character all the way around. And now we're going to see basically 0, 1, 0. And if I rotate, you'll see it slowly change. We'll see the x change and the y change based on, of course, the rotation. Now in order to get a distance, normally after you've gotten your vector, your forward vector, you'll just multiply it by a larger number, in this case 4,000, and that'll give me a line that I'm projecting. All I'm doing here is getting my actor's location, setting that as a start point for my line trace, getting the forward vector saying, hey, which direction is forward, multiplying it by 1,000, adding that to my actor's location saying, okay, go 4,000 units forward, and setting that as my end. And then I'm projecting that using my line trace here. Now keep in mind, this is the location in world space. But it's for this actor based on the x location, the x axis. What do I mean by that? Let me pull up my little box here. This is a little rotating box that is going to cast out a line trace. We're going to go ahead and do the forward vector for the line trace. And we're going to rotate it. Let's rotate it on the z. So let me hook this up here. And let's go ahead and hit play and watch what happens. You'll notice the cube spinning. You'll notice the forward vector indicated by the cone. And you'll notice it's always going to point forward even though my item is spinning. So like I mentioned before, it is the local for the forward because that is forward on my actor, locally forward. And it doesn't matter which axis I roll it on. I could roll it on the Y, for example. Now this will give me an issue. But you'll notice it starts, and it will stop mainly because of gimbal lock and the way I've done my rotation. It's not the right way. But you did notice it is following it properly, even if I'm rotating it on a different axis. And of course, it would be the same if I was to roll it like this. Not really going to see much of a difference, but as it's rolling, it's still the same forward direction. So that's what our forward vector is. It's the forward direction. It's a vector, an x, y, and a z. It's normalized between 0 and 1, and it's basically the forward direction of this actor in world space. Now, I've been saying actor because I've been using the actor forward vector node. Now, there are two other vector forward vector nodes. There's a scene component version and a get forward vector, which takes a rotator. And these work basically the same way. Let me go ahead and unhook this one here for my actor, and let's do a forward vector for a scene component. Let's do the camera. Now, my camera is attached separately right here and it's actually using a spring arm so it actually is not following the same rotation and we'll see that in a second so we want to get the forward vector for my camera and we'll do the same thing 
And we're going to start at the camera. So let's unhook this. Let's put our camera in right here. And we'll put it in as our start point and add it in to our destination. So now we should be starting at our camera and going forward from the camera. And let's hit play. Actually, I need to do it over here. We'll hit play. And it's going to look a little weird, but let me go ahead and jump out and show you. Let me go ahead and actually uh, stop this. Go to my transforming box. Let me go ahead and shut off its rotation so we don't get annoyed. And we get the line cast. There we go. So we'll go back to what I was doing. Let me look down. Let me eject. And we'll look. Now, if you'll look here, our pawn is looking forward. His forward direction is this way. However, our camera, which we can't see, is it's up here. Its forward direction, since we're looking down, is going to be that way and looking at the ground here. Let me repossess it, and you'll see. My camera is independent, and even though my pawn is looking forward, I'm not using the actor's forward director. I'm using the camera's forward director. I'm using a scene component and saying, hey, camera, which direction is forward? And since my camera is rotating 360 degrees around, as well as up and down, the camera's rotation is changing. And therefore, if I was actually say, what is the forward vector of the camera, it's going to point me in the direction it's pointing forward. So keep that in mind. The last one is our rotator version. And all it's going to do is take in a rotator. So if you happen to have something that has a rotator and you don't have access to the scene component or the actor, or you're just given a value and you want to find the forward version of it, you can just plug in a rotator. It's going to work the same way. So I'm just going to get the rotation of my capsule, my character. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. I can actually just do the get actor location start because it's the same thing. Do it like this. Oops. Uh, this one goes here. This one goes here. And let's run this. And we should see a forward arrow just like before. And ignore the printout because I'm not checking for my actor itself. But as you can see, it's working. We are getting the forward direction of the rotation of the capsule component and then broadcasting my line trace. So that is what our forward vector is for. It's useful when you want to know which way is forward. Now, there's two things. It assumes X is forward, positive X is forward on your actor, scene component, etc. If I was to rotate my character so X was not forward, then my forward vector is not going to be forward for what my mesh might look like. Something to keep in mind. It assumes X positive is your forward vector. Second of all, there is no backward vector. Well, that's pretty simple. The opposite of forward is backwards, and we can just use math to get the backward vector. So let me plug this one in here. We'll make sure actors the same. Let's check this. We should have a forward line. Okay. Now, if we want backwards, all we have to do is multiply it by negative 1. So if we take our forward vector, multiply it by a float, and we'll do negative 1. And then we plug that in. So now we have the negative value of forward, and we'll hit play. Now you notice it's going backwards. I'm using a line trace backwards because I now have the backwards vector, which is just the opposite of the forward. So forward vector, multiply it by negative 1, you now have the backward vector, and then you can do any other math like you wish. That's going to wrap up our forward vector nodes. They're useful for knowing which way is forward. It takes in an actor, a scene component, or a rotation. It outputs the vector, which is an x, y, z that's normalized between 0 and 1. And it's going to be assuming forward is the x positive on your blueprint, actor, scene component, or the rotation.